Welcome back. In the previous lesson, we talked about three reasons why video is an amazing tool for anyone who's trying to learn anything. We started off by looking at this picture of this guy watching television, and we talked about how there are two modes of information coming from the television, the audio mode and the visual mode. I'd like to carry this a little further forward now and talk about cognitive load theory. Cognitive load theory comes from educational psychology. An educational psychologist or researcher named John Sweller in the late 1980s wanted to find out what characterizes video that really works well for educational purposes. In other words, what, what are the features of videos that really make them good for learning anything? Sweller wasn't uh, specifically looking at language teaching and language learning. He was looking at training videos, videos that teach people how to do things, and so on. But I think you'll see that a lot of his ideas really apply very well to the language classroom. So I'll talk you through cognitive load theory. Here's how Sweller describes what goes on when someone takes in information in the form of a video. First of all, the information, the two modes of information, the audio and the visual information, come in to the person's brain. Specifically, for Sweller, they come into what he calls sensory memory. The sensory memory is, in fact, what you're using right now. It's a super short-term memory that allows you to get from the first word of my sentence, from the beginning of my sentence, to the end of my sentence, and to make some kind of sense of it. So, this is just the, the, the basic function of being able to watch something and pay attention to it. As information comes into the sensory memory, we apply the processes of attention and selection. Some of this is conscious, we do it by choice, and some of it happens automatically as a function of the brain. The brain helps us pay attention to certain things and select information to focus on by filtering out distractions in the environment. There may be the noise of builders coming from the house next door, for example, that would normally distract us, but the brain can filter that out. We might also choose certain things in the incoming message to focus on. So through this process of attention and selection, the information coming from the video goes into the working memory. The working memory is where we can begin to do maybe more than one thing with the ideas that are coming in. So for example, if this guy is watching a football match on television, he'll be watching the action of the players, but in his working memory, he may also be thinking of the last time he saw his team play and how they performed. He may be thinking ahead to what the score will be at the end of the match and so on. So in the working memory, we can have several ideas going on at one time. For Sweller, learning takes place when information goes from the working memory up into the long-term memory. The long-term memory is the memory where we store information for a longer period of time than just when we're experiencing it. So the measure for Sweller of whether learning has taken place is what he calls retrieval. Retrieval is when we take information back from the long-term memory sometime later. So if this guy has watched the football game and then the next day or a couple of days later, he's talking about it at work with his colleagues and he remembers a fantastic goal that his favorite player made or something like that, then Sweller would say that he has learned this information. He's learned the football game because he can retrieve it later. In the language classroom, if learners are able to use grammar and use vocabulary the following week after they've studied it in a lesson, then that would be retrieval from long-term memory in, in Sweller's terms. Sweller makes two further observations about this whole system. The first is that long-term memory is, at least in theory, unlimited. There's no limit to the amount of information that we can hold in our brain for the long term. On the other hand, working memory is limited. Everyone knows that you can only think about so many things at one time. So what Sweller concluded from this is that if working memory is limited, 
then that's where we need to focus to maximize learning. If the working memory is overworked or the working memory becomes too crowded or confused, then learning can't take place. Okay, so let's take a break here, and when we come back in the next lesson, we'll finish part two uh, by looking at how we can apply Sweller's cognitive load theory to choosing videos for the classroom. I'll see you shortly. <laughs>